I kind of saw what I'm geeking out about. I've got a couple of things I want to talk about. They're only like little things, so I might cheat and have several geek outs. No. Yes. You know we don't do it like that. What is up, everybody, and welcome to episode 57 of the Geekcast. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my good buddy from the UK, Toby. What is up, Toby? What is up, Bobby? Nice to see you, to see you, to see you, to see you nice. <laughs> Relax over there. It's been a while, though. It's been a while since you disappeared on me last week. Yeah, I went to see Holly. Stuck me with the Scott. Yep. And, you know, I've still not listened to that episode. I'm, I am I read oh, the book, and I'm refusing to dude, listen to it. We, it's all it is, is ball breaking the whole time. Yes, exactly. Every, every stupid little thing, I'm like, Toby, spoiler alert. <laughs> and I knew it would be, so I'm, I'm yeah. like, I'm... Uh, it's the best. Because every single second I get a chance, I go, Toby, spoiler alert. Like, I'm talking about <laughs> stuff that's like 15, 20 years ago, and I'm like, Toby, spoiler alert. <laughs> so, um, how was your trip? How was your, your little quasi mini vacation? It was really cool, actually. Really nice to finally meet Holly in person because we'd, we'd only talked online. And... I don't care about Holly. How was Iggy? Yeah. It, oh, Iggy was cool. You know, he was cooler than I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to be a bit, bit manic. I don't know. I just had an impression of him just being a bit hyper all the time, but mm-hmm. he was quite chill and yeah. you know fun to hang out with. So, yeah. I love Iggy. Iggy is awesome. Yeah, we yeah. played Mario Kart 8 together and Mario 3D World. Nice. Yeah, it was a good time. That's good stuff. Amazing how Nintendo brings people together. <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, because like, when you go around friends' houses like in person, very rarely do you say, should we play a, a multiplayer game on PS4? Because there aren't many, you know. No, there's not yet. It's, not, it's, it's all like online multiplayer, whereas yeah. like Nintendo consoles are always good for like local multiplayer. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um all right, so let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our geek outs. What are you geeking out about, Tooms? Uh, I'm geeking out about a few things. Um, I'm going to cheat because they're quite small things. You know, I'm not going to talk in length about them. But number one, uh, the GTA Five uh, online stunt tracks became available, so you can make your own stunt races. And I've just been really like getting into making my own stunt races on that like all of us uh in our little online crew have been making mm-hmm. lots of cool races and that so i can't wait to show you what we've been coming up with. when when are you guys playing again um uh I, we haven't arranged it it'll be you sometime see, sometime this week or scum, all week scumbags I'm all all week, you don't call me once you don't you don't message me once and be like and you must have not been putting on Twitch either, because I never got any alerts. No, because you know why? Like before, you you had to stream on Twitch if you wanted to capture other people's voices in your video recording. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, there was some mystery update where you didn't have to. You don't have to do that anymore. You can just record without streaming. Uh, okay, okay. So I've not felt the need to stream as much, you know. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And that's normally my tip off that you guys are playing. And I'm like, oh, if I'm if I'm free, I'm not really like, oh, I need to go play, and then I'll message you or something yeah i, I mean no I invites took... my drummy no, the thing is I, I, my drummy, I, you broke my heart drummy i really thought you would reach out to me i thought we were friends i see how we are now that's I okay forgot, i forgot that you were on vacation yeah like on holiday yeah it's like i thought you was at work so the other day was like last night we was playing and i was off i was home the thing is you were online on ps4 and yeah. i was like I said to him, nah, he's probably just got back from work or whatever. He's probably still at work. But you were at home, so... I was home. I was, yeah. I was probably... What time was it? Uh, it was like, like 10 or 11 in the evening here. So, so it was like 5. I mean, yeah. Dude, I was watching WWE Network. I was just chilling out watching WWE Network. Well, we, the thing is, you can see that we're playing if you look at your friends list. I didn't look at my friends list. I was watching WWE Network. You know what's strange is? That's weird. Because when you guys came online, I never got a notification. I must have shut yeah. that off. Well, we were already online from like half eight. So You're, you're trash. Yeah, yeah. We I, I never check my friends list. I just go in and do what I'm going to do because I'm like, yeah, I'm not a big online player, so no, I don't really check my friends list. My uh, second little geek out is uh, custom minifigures. So I bought, I went, I was in this uh, W. H. Smith, which you don't have in America, but no. um, I was in there and I found this Lego magazine called Blocks, 
And I thought, well, I've got to get that because it shows off like really awesome, like custom builds and latest like Lego set reviews and everything. And in there, I found some links to some websites that did custom minifigs. So I went on there. Uh, one in particular I like called um, Little Legends. Mm -hmm. com and they specialize in like military custom minifigures and like modern like police and army stuff so and they also do like you can order individual body parts and, and accessories so I got myself a custom minifig from there with like a World War II Bren gun and everything so nice. yeah so I'm looking nice. forward to that the um are you done your geek outs yeah, yeah that's it. okay all right. Um, myself, I'm geeking out about uh, the image and form physical copy game coming out of Dig and Heist together. Uh, it's going to hit the PS4 and the Wii U. Uh, should be the same time. I'm actually going to get them both. Um, and the reason why, and people are probably like, why would you get both? That makes no sense. I own both games on both consoles already. I don't own it on the Wii U yet. Uh, but the only reason, the main reason for me is, as you know, I'm I'm a Steam World ambassador, which means I won a contest a while ago. Um, which anytime Heist comes out on any of the consoles, I get it for free. I get a copy for myself and th uh, three additional. I get three. No, I get a, a copy for myself, and then I think I get three extra codes. I forget. It's been a while since I got one. Um, Whenever it launches, so like when it hit PS4, I got a copy, additional copies. I got, you know, when it hit the Steam, I got three codes. I gave them, I gave all those away. Um, so for the Wii U, I, I know I'll get copies for it, but I figure I'm getting all this stuff for free. I want to give them my money in some degree because I love Heist. I think Heist is a phenomenal game. I I can't speak highly enough about Dig. Dig's a phenomenal game as well. So for me, I'm like, I right, dude, I just want the physical copy. I'm like, I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, this is awesome. You yeah, know, it's so cool. And it comes um, with the DLC as well. Comes with the DLC. You know, um, it's like what what did Brian say? It was like a thirty five dollar value, and they're charging twenty five. Yeah, um, for what a bargain. Which, that that is a bargain, really. Yeah. It is. I mean, if you've never played either of those games, you really got to check them out. There, I can't speak highly enough about them. They're pretty awesome. Um, what are you playing, Tobes? All right. So, months and months ago now, I don't even remember how long ago, Animal Crossing uh, Amiibo Festival came out, mm -hmm. and I pre-ordered it because it came with a couple of Amiibo. Yeah. I was like, "Yep, getting those Amiibo." The game. I've had it since launch, not put it in my console once. And that's the game that me and Tony were playing for your that's channel. That's right, yeah. So um, yesterday, like, I had some time off, and Karina was like, can we can we play this Animal Crossing game that we've not never played? And I was like, oh, okay, we'll give it a go, like, begrudgingly. Put it in, and we played for, like, a 45-minute game, like, one round, one game, and I loved it. I thought it was so cool. I dude, I said the same thing. I I don't understand where the hate came from the, for the game. It's not the greatest game. No, in the world. but like no, but it's an enjoyable, fun game, it man. It is enjoyable. And the thing that I find most enjoyable about it is the stalk market where you oh, buy turnips and you I sell turnips. It. Such yeah. a simple concept, but it's it adds an element of risk and it attention to every sort of round because like the, the stock market goes up and down. Mm -hmm. So on one day, the turnips might be worth a lot less than you paid for them, or they might be worth a, like, a lot more, or they might be steady. And You start panicking. Yeah, you start panicking because you think, oh, I've only got three days left to sell these turnips. Yeah. I hope I roll the dice and land on the right space so I can sell them for a profit. Yeah. And that in itself is just a, such a cool element to this game. Like the rest of it, all right, there's not... It's not like a Mario Party. There's no mini games. See, it's and that's just... where I think they made the mistake because there is a bunch of mini games in there, but that's separate, and you yeah. have to unlock those games. They should have taken those games and put them in the actual game itself, and I think they would have had a better game, honestly. Yeah. So anyway, so we we both really enjoyed playing that one, and we'll definitely play it again. Get Becky and Mike around to play, and I, you know what I found really cool was just using the amiibo to roll the dice. Yes. Like. Because I've never scanned an Amiibo before. Like yeah. I, I just keep them in their box, or the ones that I open, I just leave on the shelf behind me. And 
you know, actually using one in game, it's such a simple thing, just put it on the gamepad. But the fact that your character in game is the character, like the amiibo that you're holding, that makes it more special. And you can yeah. save, like, you can, when you win happy points, you save those to your amiibo. Yep. So, which unlocks different outfits yeah. later on yeah. as you go so, as you go further and you save more then you can go and change because i use tom nook every time we play and like i've already changed his outfit like he's i, I think i have the original og tom nook with the apron on yeah that's what he wears when, he, when we play and it, it's it's fun yeah. what i think you should really check out is um on the on the single player side there's a game where it's a deserted island mm-hmm and what happens is the amiibo cards come into play with that. All so right. You, so you pick three amiibo cards, which you should have, right? Yeah, yeah, we've got loads of them. Okay, so you take the three amiibo cards. You pick three characters you want. Doesn't matter. Every character has different abilities. Cool. Okay. So it drops you off in the middle of an island, and you have to get off the island. So you have to then go out and you have to search and you have to find like planks to build the raft. Then you have to find like the sails to build the sail. And then you have, but you have so many days to do it. And again, based on the different abilities, you're going out and you're going through the island. You're trying to find. So it's, it, dude, it's cool. It, it sounds cool. Yeah. I can't wait to try it yeah, out. And you would like that. You know, like saving your happy points to your amiibo, it makes me more attached to that character and yes. to that amiibo. Like before, I didn't really care, but you know, I'm playing as KK Slider and I'm like, this is my character now. And yeah. he's got his points that I earned and he's going to have his suits that I earned. And like, I'm not going to want anyone else to play as this guy. So yeah. he's like, he's mine. It's, it's, dude, it is so cool. Mm. I, I like it. I mean, I got every one of the characters. And I, granted, it's not, you know, Again, it's not the greatest game in the world. I just don't think it's as bad as people made it out to be. Like people just, you know, it's the same thing as is they're dealing with right now at Metroid uh, Prime Federation Force, where people are like, "Oh, it's the worst game ever." And this, uh, yes, it's not your mainstay game, but they're doing something different. And yeah, what I have loved in Animal Crossing to go on the Wii U, absolutely. Tony and I like that's was part of the decision making in the second Wii U was there was rumors that they were going to get one and a lot of people were leaning that way so i was like well let's get it you know we'll play mario kart together now and this at the other when animal crossing comes we both have two consoles and we can go have fun you know we had two wii's when it was because she'd play upstairs i'd play downstairs we had our own towns kept on separate and stuff so um yeah i don't it, feel like i don't feel like they, you know i feel like the, an Animal Crossing would have got on the Wii U would have been basically the same thing as the the 3DS version, maybe a couple tweaks in HD, and I would have been bored with it after a month, you know. So I get why they did this. They they're just doing something different, you know. Yeah, I mean they have all the HD assets, like at least for the mm -hmm. town and the characters. So part of me thinks that a lot of that work is already done. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they are secretly working on a proper... Uh oh, I know they are. It's going to be on yeah, NX or whatever. So. It's going to be on the NX. Yeah. But ultimately, for me, what I would like to see them do is I would almost prefer a Animal Crossing HD that's a lot like the Animal Crossing Mario Kart as opposed to the one in this version. All right. Because this version is just flat. You know, we, we, yeah. You know, yeah, it, it's the tumble, the roll, you know, like yeah, yeah. I like to call it like a log, you know, like, in, um, but the one in, in Mario Kart 8, it's all different levels. And it's just like, you feel like you're actually in a village. Yeah, you know? I mean, like they could shake it up a lot more like because it's, each Animal Crossing is different, but they feel incremental. Like, yeah, they could do a lot more to just make it feel different. New Leaf, I felt was the biggest jump. In yeah. the series, because they did so much, they added the swimming, which was huge. With yeah, the you know the diving and such. So there was different things that they added by the time we hit New Leaf. But I felt like New Leaf was the biggest jump. I felt like what they did was New Leaf was they took all the best aspects of all the original Animal Crossing games and then just added on top of it. So like the island and the mini games. That's the other thing. Like why, why didn't they take the, the island mini games that they already had? And put them in this game. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of people that didn't go to the island and play the mini games. Yeah. So you could have taken those and sprinkled them throughout. You know what I mean? Like, don't do it on every thing. You know what I mean? Like, but maybe when, you know, you both land on the same spot or 
something like that. Like then you cause the conflict and you do this game. You know what I mean? Something they could have done something. It, it would have mm-hmm. been, I or like, what if? Here's an example with the stock market or the stock market. Mm-hmm. So let's say that there's a really high valued one, right? And um, maybe you can't cash in until all the turns are done. So let's say you and I both land on the same place. They're not going to let us both cash in at that price. We have to then do a battle, and whoever wins gets to sell their their, their turnips at the higher price. Yeah. Something like that. Like, yeah. And they could have taken some of those mini games that were in the actual game already and the ones that were in New Leaf, put them in, and then – because there was one in New Leaf that was awesome. Um, you had these rubber hammers. And you mm. ran around and hitting this shell, and the shell like went by itself. But like the person that hit it the most got scored the highest points, and they yeah. won the contest. So you're like you're running around, you're trying to catch this thing. That would have been they could have done so much. Yeah, but. they could do a lot of stupid things with it. Yeah, that's um, a that's not the only game I'm playing though. Yeah, I, I was t- telling you before last week I've been playing a lot of Lego City Undercover on Wii U, and that's I a just game. Got that. I just yes. got that from uh, the Nintendo Selects. You guys got it the first round. Yeah. We just got it on the second round. Yeah, because I had it when it first came out, and I, so I played it. it, and I enjoyed it, but the load times just drove me crazy, and I was so tired of waiting through loading screens, I got rid of it. But then I felt really nostalgic for it, because it was like an early Wii U game that I had that I didn't have anymore. So so I thought, oh, it's in the selects range, I'll get it again. It's you know, it's worth giving the developer a bit of extra money. like. And um, But anyway, so I got it, and I'm just and now I'm just hooked on it, like even more than I was before. Like this game, it has, I I truly believe this is the best Lego game that I've played. And, you know, it has some technical issues here and there, like a bit of stuttering frame rate and the slow loading times between certain areas. But I think the open world of it and the way that it's based on all these different classic Lego things like Lego city and, Mm -hmm. and everything like you, there's just so much to do, like, because, you know, you can be the cop that fires his grapple gun, or you can be the robber who's got, like, a a crowbar to open things, and mm-hmm. he can shoot, like, paint bullets, and then there's, like, the, the, the chicken farmer who can float with a chicken, like Link can in Zelda, and it's just, like, all these different characters have so many cool different abilities, and in the open world, it's, like, every couple of feet, there's something new to do with a different character, and... I don't know. I just love the whole setting up because it is like a bit like a childish GTA, and you know I'm a well, big GTA and, and fan. And the thing too is like you, you and I were talking about this earlier this week when you were telling me about it. And the one thing that's true is like when you play and you you like you're you're going through and there's a gas station. That's a that's an actual gas station model from yeah. like the 60s and 70s. Yeah, and they're all in the game. So it's all these little things, and there's even like new stuff. Like, like I was saying to you, like you were asking me if I collected or if I did Legos and stuff, and I was like, nah, I haven't in a while. Like I did these ones. The 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 places that I was telling you, the mall, the green grocer, and all that stuff. Like those buildings are in that game. Like I was freaking out when I was talking. Yeah. Like, oh my god, that's the buildings I built. And she's like, oh my god, that is, isn't it? Because we used to go to Disney every year, and I used to buy these big sets for like 150 bucks or whatever. And um. And it would take me like a week, week and a half to put them all together. And they were three stories. And these, they're actually in the game. And I was like freaking out. So I was like, that is so cool that they're yeah, in there. And really they, cool. It is. It's a fun game. I don't understand. Like, you know, I don't understand why it didn't. I don't know how it did. I don't know how it sold. But to me, like when you look at a game like Batman, Lego, or even Lego Dimensions, this game is better than those because mm-hmm. it's actually, like you said, it's open world and it's it's like GTA. It's like a, it's GTA light, you know what I mean? Like yeah. minus the cursing and stuff, it's GTA to a T, you know? And there's actually some things that go back to like GTA 4, like City and stuff like that. Like when you're playing, you're like, oh my God, I remember kind of doing something similar to this back in the past mm-hmm. it's just it's really it's so and it, it's it's based on movies too so, yeah the movie uh, references are yeah. so funny oh it's hilarious man it is hilarious and it also listen the nintendo stuff that's mixed into it so cool yeah you know? and the other thing that i really liked was the the gamepad use 
is kind of cool. Yeah, it like, is. Yeah. Like people calling you on the phone and you're it's actually the game pad. Yeah. And like the talking through it. So like when you're on the phone, you're not hearing it through your speakers, you're hearing it through the game pad. Yeah. And it's like just little things like that. It's just yeah, really, really, really nice cool. touch. Yeah, I actually went, I bought it if you started talking about because Chelsea Capri said that she was playing it. And then you were telling me you got it again. You were playing. And I was like, I'm gonna go get this thing. So I saw it up on Amazon for twenty bucks. So I, I bought it. So we'll get, I, I think it comes out this week. So I'll have it this week, and I'm gonna cool. start playing the game. Um, myself, I am playing. I mean, I've been playing a lot of Xenoblade Chronicles. Being the week off, I just dove back into that game. I'm further than a free DS, free DS, or no, Wii no, 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 no. I've been, I went back on the Wii U. Okay, um, which. It's the it's the same game. It's just the yeah, it's just pretty. So yeah, it yeah. looks better. It looks yeah. better. Plays better. There's not as many like little. What controller are you using for it? I'm using the gamepad. Using the gamepad because because yeah. when I played it on Wii, I had the classic controller Pro, mm-hmm. and that controller felt so good. It's really lightweight, but just the sticks on it and the the hand grips felt amazing. You so can use like, either or. Doesn't yeah. I mean, it does give you the option to use. Different controllers and stuff. I just always use the gamepad. Yeah, you know, I'm sure the gamepad feels right. with the map and stuff, and it's just it's easier. Um, but I finally got to the point where I'm just past where you and I were on All the right. 3DS version. So the problem with it is, is there's you got to grind. You really do. There are certain sections where you got to get in. You got to grind, and yeah. that's what I was doing last. I was up till like one o'clock in the morning last night grinding in that game. And because I'm, I'm at this part where I'm, I'm fighting this gigantic, like three headed dragon, and um, it's called a telepathy, 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 something like that. Yeah, whatever. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so I'm fighting him, and it's he's a beast, man. He's brutal, and I'm I think I'm like one level under him. So, which I know from playing the last guy that, like, you need to be at least the same level as them, mm. um, if not one or two higher. Yeah. So, I'm I'm doing that. I'm going, I'm grinding, I'm fighting different beasts and stuff. But the problem is that the, the creatures I'm fighting to level up are same level as me. So, it's a battle. And then if one more jumps in, they wipe me out and I can't, I yeah. can't level up. So, I have to, like, grab one. And try to get it to chase me a little bit, yeah, and I run away from it. Yeah. And then when I get a little bit of this, this way I can beat them. And then once I, I let my levels re up, and then I go after the other one. And but it's a good game. It's really, really good, man. I, you know, I like it much more than X. And mm-hmm. I mean, I liked X, but this game is just so much better because of the story. I love Shulk. I yeah. love the whole. The voice acting and all that, like, I think it's a really good game, man. Don't you wish, though, that you could transfer the save file between your 3DS version and... God, yes. Weaver? If I did, man, I would have been... I bet you I'd be close to beating this game by now if, if yeah. they would have let me do that. Because I think I'm, like, 25, 30 hours in now. And I'm like... But that was basically me going back and, and because I wanted to... Ca- now that I've caught up, I don't have no problem playing. Yeah. When I was trying to get caught back up to where we were on the 3DS, I was like, oh, God, this takes forever. And, and, you know, the sad thing is, is with me being on vacation, it was easy for me to do stuff. Now, not being on vacation, I have a feeling I'm going to let it sit a little bit. But like you said, the nice thing about it is, is you get back in there, you can figure out where you're at real quickly and, and go. Like, it actually lets you read the notes to see where you're supposed to be, like what you're doing. Yeah, and and for the combat, there's like manuals for all the different techniques and stuff. So if that stuff's easy though. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you understand the combat, it's pretty simple. There, there's really not a lot of, you know, it does get a little complex. Um, you just got to remember like things like topple, like certain yeah. enemies you can't hurt unless you've toppled them first. And- yes, yes. And this one in particular, like you can't because he reads your moves. He uses telepathy to read yeah. your moves, so you can't. You have in the in the Monado, you have a move that like will disorient him, and he can't read your moves. You'll get a point that if you don't do that, you're hit. And he, you're yeah. missing. You're everybody's missing him. And I'm like, holy crap, dude, come on, man! And then it pops up, you hit it, and then you can go. So that's kind of the hard part with him is where that's where I'm I'm struggling because I'm not high enough in level. I'm not getting the Monado charged quick enough, and it's just frustrating. 
So I still that, find it funny that you call it a Monando. Monando. It's a Mona- M- Monado. 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 M. I don't care. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. I'm illiterate. We say things how we say things. All right. Fair enough. I, I say Mario. I don't say Mario. Like everybody. I well, you're Mario. saying Mario, correct? Is it's Mario? Is it Mario? It is Mario. I yeah. Thought everybody says it's Mario. Yeah. All the other Americans okay. say Mario. Okay. But that's okay. wrong. I say it's Mario. Mario. <laughs> I've always said Mario. And then, like, I um, I used to say Kid Icarus. What? Oh my kid, God, Bobby! <laughs> it's Kid Icarus. <laughs> kid uh, Icarus. <laughs> I say, it's I say Ryu and it's Ryu, right? Yeah, yeah, and it, they're just all. You know, I say Ryu. Yeah, I say I say Ryu, and then, but I don't think people. I think. But Yoshi, say, do you say Yoshi or I Yoshi? Say Yoshi. I say Yoshi. You, I say Yoshi. It's not Yashi. It's it Yoshi. Yoshi. Yo, Yo is Yo. Yosh. Y O S H is Yosh. <laughs> no, it's Yoshi. Yoshi. <laughs> it's a Yashi. What's the other one you say? You say something. Uh, whatever. Yashi. We'll, be here, we'll be here for an hour talking about that nonsense. Okay. So first topic, um, I, I kicked it to you and I said, like, hey, listen, um, what are your five? And the reason I said five was because I knew what one of the games were and it would it would have annoyed the hell out of me if we would have got to the PS4. Mm-hmm. And I said one game and he says that game. I know what he is on his list. And I don't want to choke him. But I just basically said, like, let's do the 3DS, the Wii U, the PlayStation 4. What's your five must-own games on these consoles? So what we'll do is we'll take turns. You read one, I'll read one. And then we just have one same on the list, just you could talk about it or whatever. All right. Um, so we'll start with the 3DS first. Okay. Go ahead. What's your first game? Uh, the absolute number one must-have game for the 3DS, I believe, is... Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. I got that too, yeah, absolutely. It's not my number one, but yes. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's my favorite 3DS game. Like, you know, it, go, it goes between that and another game. But but yeah, I just think that it's, I think it's better than Ocarina of Time. Like, I, I am an Ocarina of Time fan, but I think that game hasn't aged as well as other Zelda games. You're the same as me. Link to the Past is your yeah. all-time favorite Zelda game. Yes. So because this felt very familiar um, because init- initially this was supposed to be a remake of A Link to the Past, and then as they started going through, they said, why don't we just make it a sequel? Yeah. Quasi, quasi-sequel. Um, Plus, and- I think it's it's more inventive, like the gameplay, just the oh, mechanics yeah. in it. It's Jumping just- into the walls and the, pa- yeah. you know, the paintings or whatever. And stuff. I loved it. I, I Yeah, I'm with you, man. I enjoyed it a lot. I liked the milk bar. I thought that was kind of a cool aspect where yeah, you go and, and listen to old Zelda tunes and um, I loved the street pass aspect of it. I never did any, any of that. Oh man! So the street pass is what happens is is if you street like let's say we street pass each other, mm-hmm. you basically set up your your link um, the way you want, like what weapons you want to use against them, and then depending upon how many hearts you currently have in the game, that's how many. What happens is when we street pass, your link becomes a shadow link, and or a dark link, and he comes to my world he'll go someplace throughout the world wherever it is so mm-hmm. i can talk to the old man in the village and he'll tell me like there's a, a new dark link just popped up and he's wherever he'll tell you where he is and then he'll put like a bounty sign out on him in, in his field in front of him so you go and you look at the bounty and he'll tell you like if i beat you how many rupees i'll get for beating you all right so then i go out and i find your your dark link Shadow Link, whatever you want to call him, and I fight him. And what it does is it brings him into an arena, and we start fighting each other. Whatever, because I can only pick, like, a sword, obviously, and then, like, one or two other weapons, sub-weapons. And then you've already set up your sub-weapons. So, so yeah, be, so you don't know who, I don't know what, what you're you've picked, here. and yeah. I don't know what I have, and, and we just battle. So it's like you can use the hook shot and the hook shot, you know, or use the boomerang and use the... There's all kinds, and it's just it's so cool the battle and, and you fight, and it's cool because sometimes you get against ones that are like they'll have like 20 hearts, and you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna be here all day. This is gonna be a battle, and but it's it's I love that aspect of it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was really cool. Um, for me, the number one game's gotta be Animal Crossing: New Leaf. I mean, I paused. That's on my list. 
Yeah, I popped like 600 hours into this thing. I think Tony's like 800. Um, there's people in our group, the, the Nintendo Guru, uh, Geek Guru group, that are like uh, thousands of hours. Um, it, it's nuts. You know what I mean? Like this, this is the type of game for me that like I could just dive in and I just lose myself. I just lose track of time. Like I could sit there for hours fishing and trying to catch certain fish because I like to fill the museum. And, yeah. Um, you know, and, and to get the gold fishing rod and stuff. And, and so I try to catch everything and, and I don't time travel. So I do it as it is, but I have a strategy guide there the whole time. And I'll be like, Oh, this fish is available at four o'clock at this time. And I'll mm-hmm. literally tell Tony like at four o'clock, I'm going to start fishing. Like that's, that's what I'm doing. And it, so yeah, Take, it takes over your life. It does, man. No doubt. No doubt. What, what's another one yours? Uh, I put steam old heist on there. I know it's on like multiple platforms, but mm-hmm. I feel like it's best suited to 3DS, you know, because that's that's where I played it first, and uh, I just find like playing that game in shorter bursts or like just you know wherever you can fit it in. It's like yeah. it's one of those games that you just have like an itch in for, you know, and you think oh, I've I've got five minutes like spare, I'll just nip on Steam World Heist and I'll do yeah. a couple of missions or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, I just and and the way you've got the two screens is really cool. Having the inventory on the bottom screen and everything. So yeah, no, that's I can't speak. I you know I started off the show with that be my geek. I can't speak highly enough about that. Game. Yeah, it's just a great game. Um, I put Fantasy Life on mine. Yeah, that's on mine as well. Yeah, I, I dude, I really enjoyed my time with this game. I didn't beat it, which upsets me. And the main reason was I took time off. I stopped playing it for a while, and then I kind of just lost where I was, and I don't know where to go anymore, and I don't know what mm. to do. And it's frustrating because I got about 30 hours in, so I'm like, I don't want to start over again. Like, that would be so frustrating to start over again. But I did. I love that game. It was a lot of you fun. Be, I, yeah, you must be near the end because I, I put about 50 hours in altogether. And you, and you beat it, right? Yeah, I'll beat it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll... Maybe one day we should all get together and play like me, you, and Holly. And yeah, and it would have been great if, if we had it at the same time. I know because we that was like a, a separation launch, right? Like you guys got it and we got yeah. it, and like that, and yeah. it was weird because that that game, that whole like let's go out together and adventure that would have been so fun, man. Yeah. It really would have. It would have yeah. been better better than GTA, so we could have <laughs> gone that. I about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's another game of yours? Um. Well, my last one on the list, uh, I put Shovel Knight. Okay. Because I couldn't really think of anything else to put. Because, you know, I could put Mario Kart, I could have put Mario 3D Land, but I think there's better versions of those games on Wii U. Yeah. And, you know, the same for Smash. Like, as a unique, like, it's not unique to 3DS, but didn't it come to 3DS first, Shovel Knight? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, it was, yeah, it went to. But I feel like... Yeah, it was Shovel Knight first. It was exclusive yeah, to, to the 3DS first. Yeah, so I, I feel like it's best suited on 3DS. I mean, it looks great on console, but, you know, it looks really good on 3DS as well. And, you know, I couldn't fit it on my PS4 list, so I had to put it on my 3DS list. Yeah, I, 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 it's on my 3D list, 3DS list as well. Yeah. I have it on the PS4. I have it. I have a physical copy on the PS4, and I have, the, I have it on the, the Wii U as well. I beat it on the Wii U. I beat it on... The 3ds. I'm at the end on the on the PS4. I just didn't beat it yet, and um, I I agree. The 3ds to me was the the, the defining edition, the best mm. way to play it. Um, I just enjoyed it so much, you know. So I, I'm it's on my list as well. It, it, it's hands down one of the best games um, on, you know. Well, it's one of the best indie games out there. Yeah, so hundred percent, so well crafted. Yeah, game. and and you. You were really into Mega Man growing up. No. Um, I, I was. So for me, it was just cool because it had that whole Mega Man feel to it. Um, but for you, I would assume like Zelda 2 and then Super Mario Brothers has that yeah. feel to it. Yeah, and just like the whole pixel art style and the, the old school sort of gameplay, you know, it's just a really good platformer. Yeah, you know? I agree. I agree. It's really solid. Um, my last game on the list is SteamWorld Dig. And um, I, it's a shame because I, I had it on the Wii U at first, and then I remembered I did there was games I wanted on the Wii U, and I took it off and moved it to the 3DS. I had Mario Golf World Tour on my 3DS, and I took that off. Um, 
But SteamWorld Dig, I, I feel like I had to have that game on it because that game to me really was the beginning of indie games for me. Um, like I had played like World of Goo on the Wii and things of that nature. But this game was the one that like I do like it, it took me like after this, I, I just started consuming indie games. Um, you know, after this, I got Shovel Knight and then, you know, just carried on like Zombie Vikings and, and all the other ones and, and Mutant Muds. And so, but this was the game that like just grabbed me and was like, indie games are legit now. Like, mm-hmm. you need to start playing these. And because there was a time where it was just like, ah, that's garbage. You know, not anymore, man. These indie games are really top notch. The only reason I would say to play the Wii U version over this version is because there's an Easter egg in the Wii U version that's just unbelievable. And as a Nintendo fan, you will freak out when you get to this section. And it's just, it's the best. It's the best, to me, it's the best version of the Easter eggs because they all have separate things. Like yeah. Sony has something, Xbox has something, but the Wii U version is the best. And I'm That's not going to awesome. say what it is. If you want to go check it out, go look online if you don't want to play the game. But I would strongly recommend going to play the game because it is, when you hit it, it's just like, oh my God. When you finally hit what's going on, it's like, Oh my god, this is so cool! So, um, but irrelevant. Like I put it on my 3DS list. I think it's it's one of the best. Yes, um, definitely a worthy one for the list. Let's jump to the Wii U now. Um, what is your first game on the Wii U? Well, there's this little old game that I like to play quite a lot. It's uh, it's quite violent, but you know we play it a lot, and there's a lot to do in it. It's called. Grand Theft Auto 5. I said Wii U, not, not the PS4. No, did you? Yes, oh, I said I'm sorry, Wii U. Boy. <laughs> Let's go PS4. We'll go PS4. We'll go PS4. Well, yeah, I could just PS4. swap that out for Lego City. They're, they're the same <laughs> game. <laughs> no, we'll you know, I, PS- I was looking at my phone. I was just looking at the PS4 list and not really paying any attention to you, Bobby. Of course. Of course. I understand. You know. I understand. We'll go PS4, I, though. It's how I feel when the Queen talks on the news. I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, we'll so yeah, G- GTA Five. PS4, it's on my so list so as well. well. Yeah. It's on my list as well. Um, There's no need to say anything about it. It's just no. We've talked um, about it enough at nauseum for the last year and a yeah. half, so we're going to go with that one. <laughs> Everyone knows what GTA is. Uh, I got one that's that's on your list. I know it is Ratchet and Clank. Yep. Um, such a beautiful game. It's the first Ratchet and Clank game I ever played. Again, I didn't beat it, but I got to the end. I'm at the end, boss. I just got to go push and push through and beat it. So good. Looks Push gorgeous. That baby out. Exactly. It's just it's a really good game. If, if you're a fan of I would say traditional 3D Mario platformers, this game's right up there. Like mm. it, you know, yeah. it's it, you need to get it, you know. And uh so th- there you go. There's so much variation in the gameplay, like with all the different guns and gadgets and Absolutely. the way you can tackle enemies and stuff. It's just yeah. awesome. Uh okay, what's your next one? Um Uncharted Four is definitely a must have. I left that off my list. You left it off? What's wrong with you, Bobby? I left it off the list. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, it, you didn't beat it. So until you beat it, we can't really have a full conversation. Oh, okay. But I, I just, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, I felt like it's a gorgeous game, but I just don't. I think it's the best looking game ever. I'll Graphic, give you that. I'll give. Yeah. I'll give you that. Graphically wise, it is the it is the best looking game right now, out there. I just I don't know what it was, man. It's just, and, I, and I'll touch on it when I when I talk about my next one. But it, it's just not you know it just it was lacking a little bit for me. So all right, there we go. Um, mine is Uncharted Collection. That's what I put on there instead. Well, that's a cheat, isn't it? It's not really a cheat because it's it for me. I never played the Uncharted games on any of the other consoles, but see, for me, Uncharted Two is a masterpiece. Yeah, and, definitely. And that's where I feel like that's why this is better than Four. I I liked Four, but I just felt like after playing Two, there was no coming back. And I felt like Four, to some degree, although you can't really say it was rushed. Because it does take a while to play, um, I felt like they didn't take the time to dive into the story the way they did in two, and do cool mechanics like they did in two. Two to me was just like you. They introduced these things. And two was like playing a movie per se. You know, like I felt like when you played two, it was just like oh my god, this is just like I feel like I'm in a movie. 
and it, I didn't get that feel when I played this one. Yeah, I think some of the the set pieces in two are a lot more exciting than the yeah. ones that I played in four. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So, what's your next one? Um, Batman Arkham Knight. I, you know, what? I didn't put that on my list either. Damn, Bobby! I wow. thought you would. Yeah, that I didn't. That's crazy. <laughs> no, I think that just that is a great game. game. Is that is. Yeah, that so is. A, as a Batman fan, um, it's not my favorite Batman game. I liked Arkham City better. Um, but that's because there were some Easter eggs in the city that really like hit home. Yeah. Um, with Arkham Knight, there was stuff that how far along are you in that? Um I don't know, there's pretty stuff you can't talk about. Just keep it vague. Yeah, there there's stuff that happened in that game that really like messed me up. Um, like brought me to tears. Yeah. And 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 the reason being is is and I and I talked about this a couple times before. I, but as a kid, I read these things and reading them, you get one feel for it. But then when you actually watched it happen and take place on screen, mm-hmm. it hit harder than reading it as a kid. And like it just got me emotional to the point like, oh my god, that wow, that's worse than I thought it was. And and like. I don't know why, but to hear, I get, I think to hear the, the, the anguish in people's voices and stuff, I think that's what really like hit those heartstrings. It just was like, wow, this is brutal. And yeah. So I'd be interested when you beat that too. Cause for you, it's probably not the same. No, just for me, for me, I just love the fact that there's so much to do. It just like, the other open world games I've mentioned, like Lego City and that, it's it's the there's always something new to be doing. Like you can go after the puzzles or you can go and solve like a different mystery or you can just go after the main villain or just glide around and look for secrets. There's yeah. just, just always something different to be doing. And Did you get to the um have you figured out the opera singer yet? No, I I've been avoiding that one. For That's now. a good one. That's a Is good it? one. Oh, it's creepy as hell, too. It's good, though. I think you'll like that one. Yeah, I've been <clears throat> focusing a lot of my time on the Riddler stuff. So, uh, See, th- that's a throwaway. You can get a keep away from that because that'll take you away from the main game so much. Oh, I really enjoy it. Uh, like, stop. Just go play better stuff. Yeah, stop doing what you enjoy and go do no, something. Th- you. <laughs> seriously. Those those things will occupy. There's like 200 and something Riddler missions. Brilliant. <laughs> that, that's fine. Do them after you've beaten the game, okay? Like, go take that. To, if you want to go 100% on that one, go to it. You're, it's holding you from actually unveiling the storyline. Yeah, it is, definitely. It's side, like, side Because there's stuff me. that happens in that game that when it clicks and it gets ramped up and going, hysterical. The, the best stuff ever. So, and I can't talk to you about it until you do it. So Yeah, I'll yeah. get back to it. Don't worry. Uh, for me, Metal Gear Solid Five is on my list. Yeah. Um, I love the game. I thought would, the game it, be, was... would it be better with zombies? <sighs> <laughs> what the hell is wrong? A with co-op them? zombie game. What is just... wrong with them, dude? Seriously, they really think that's gonna sell. Like, what, what do you you? So you take something that sells through the roof. You take something that's amazing and you just piss all over it and go. We're gonna go something totally different. Like this is this is what this drives me crazy with. Even with like when they do movies and mm-hmm. reboots and things like that, like don't touch it. Make a different game. Make a totally different. You have the Silent Hills franchise, right? Yeah. That's more of a Silent Hills game than it is a zombie, you know, than a Metal Gear game. Like, why would you do that? Or you know what? Just make a zombie game and call it something else. Yeah, I mean they've done spin-off like things with Metal Gear before, but I think that this not is like just, this. Not this like is just this. such a cliche. It's like like okay, so in Metal Gear Solid Five, there is a zombie section. Okay, so you go into this one part and it's quarant the, the section is quarantined because something happened, and mm-hmm. there's zombies in there. You know what I mean? Like legit, there's like there's a chemical reaction and they got the part of the mother base like shut off and you have to go through and figure it all out. Yeah. And there's zombies. In. Okay. That I got. Okay. I was fine with it because it was just one little section done and it was creepy. Fine. It was cool. Good stuff. You have, Oh, they're just, 
Konami is so screwed up. They're just a mess. Because they really believe in their mind. They could take Metal Gear and slap it on anything. It's going to sell. Mm. It's not going to sell. Mm. It's not going to do anything. People are not going to buy this game. You know, I really don't believe it. Well, first off, they're not going to buy the game as a protest. Yeah, yeah, to definitely. That's number one. Number two, and maybe that's why they didn't do like a, a, a true act, a true Metal Gear game. Maybe they felt like let's just throw something out there. Because a lot, people yeah, a lot cheaper investment. Yeah, know. let's just throw something out there for now. A cheap investment. Maybe we can make our money back. Maybe we can recoup. Get fans to like back off a little bit, and then we come back with a true Metal Gear game. Enough time to make fans forget about what happened with Kojima and all that stuff. Sadly, the problem is is all the all the uh, the agreements, the yeah. non disclosure agreements will be up and then they'll probably be talking about that stuff because that'll yeah. be another ball of wax um what's what's another one on your list uh well the last one on my list is until dawn okay and i just i put that on there because it's such a unique experience uh that i've never had and i've never played a game like it and i just love it like it's sort of game that i think you need to play with other people like friends or, or family mm-hmm. that you know, everyone sort of sits on the sofa and watches and shouts out like decisions, what they think you should do, and and it's like there's a whole mystery to it, like who's the killer, like, and you're all trying to figure it out together, and it's really spooky and scary. You know, play it at night with the lights off, really atmospheric, and I just sort of, I really love that game. Like, it's a special special place for me. Yeah, I know you got, I know you had a lot of fun with that game. Yeah, like, and, and all them coming over and playing it. Um. I got two games. That I, I, oh, I got three games list left on my list. Two of them are kind of because I'm not really sure, but I think they're M- Minecraft is one, and that's mainly because. And you, again, that's the same as kind of the, like the, the the Steam World games. Like you could play them anywhere, mm-hmm. but I feel like that's the best version because the world is so massive. Um, Rocket League, I have on there. Um, yeah, Rocket League is definitely a cool game. But for me, Last of Us is one that. You know, if you didn't play it on the PS3, you got to get it on the PS4 because it is just such a good. It's probably, I don't even probably, it definitely is in my top five of all time mm-hmm. favorite games. Like, it is such a story driven game. And that's where, that's where I feel like where Uncharted 4 drops the ball a little bit because coming from Last of Us to Uncharted 4, my hype level was through the roof for that game and it just fell a little flat for me because last of us was so good uncharted 2 set up stuff that you see it, it has that feel for cuz when i played last of us first then i went back and played uncharted 2 i was like oh my god i could see it's definitely the team that worked on last of us here so mm-hmm. i kind of and i understand they didn't want to do like a, a last of us clone for uncharted 4 but at the same time it just didn't feel like they were all connected, um, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. But but for me, Last of Us, like such a phenomenal story, so good. Um, just had you twists and turns, and have you up and down, and just hands down one of the best endings too to a game. I yeah, you know, I love the ending. You know, because it it makes you question things, and and you know you have some people that feel one way, and then you have some people that feel another way, and it's just like. Really, truly, just a phenomenal thing. Um, Wii U. What is your first game on the Wii U? Uh, well, we've talked about it a lot, so it's it's Lego City. Okay, okay. Um, I thought you, I just had to put it on there because it's exclusive. So yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, In fact, all of my ones are exclusives. <laughs> Well, that's not saying much. Yeah. Pretty much everything Nintendo does yeah, is exclusive. pretty much. Yeah. Um, for me, the first one I'm going to get list is Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Yeah, that's a cool um, game. It's not on my list, but oh, that game is so good, man! Mm. And I just beat it last week, so I'm like all excited because I, I beat it finally. But it's graphically, it is phenomenal. It is unbelievable what they did with that game. It just looks gorgeous. The music, perfect. That there's you played it, right? I've not played that one. I played oh, the. Really? Donkey Kong Country. So there's the a level um, in, I believe it's in like an Africa type vibe is yeah. what it is. And you're playing and 
it's caught on fire and yeah. it is so good so good the because everything's like a silhouette yeah and it's all black and you're playing but there's like flames and like you're grabbing onto uh just really good game i love that game i'm not sure is it in the select range it is right now it is right yeah, now. maybe i should pick 20, it up for then. 20 bucks you should pick it up it mm. is so good for 20 bucks it's a hard game too it's not an yeah easy the, game. The, the, the wii one was really hard as well oh it's harder than that it's, is it it's, <laughs> oh yeah yeah but it's it's so rewarding it's a rewarding hard you know what i mean like yeah and and you know, i i can't you know i love it i think it's a great game what's another what's on your list uh, I've got Mario Mario Kart Eight. Yes, absolutely. Um, just pinnacle of the Mario Kart series, apart from the battle mode. Yeah, the battle mode's horrible. Yeah, um, definitely. But but, I, but yes, I, hands down, to me, the most gorgeous Mario Kart game. Yeah, um, and, and I the loved, audio is great as well. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. The audio yeah. they took the they took the music because even that's the thing I was getting. I was gonna jump in and say like with the DLC tracks. Mm-hmm. They, they when they did tracks that were like redos, remasters, um, they redid the music as well, and yeah. it's all orchestral, and it's yeah. just amazing. It's so like, good, it gets you so pumped up, and it's so good, man. The Zelda track, did you buy the DLC? Yeah, I got both of them. Oh, that Zelda track is amazing, amazing. Yeah, I, I love the way the coins um, make. Rupee sounds, yeah, but they're, they're not coins, they're rupees. Oh, they are rupees, they are rupees. I yeah, can't yeah, remember yeah. if they were, but yeah, not. they like they change things, yes, just for that, you know, to suit that. Oh, uh, so it they did the same thing with F0. F0, you don't collect coins, yeah, there's you, the boost like things get the on the edge on the yeah. side and stuff. Oh, yeah, man, it they really did, you know, just amazing with it. And I love the Animal Crossing tracks, I love the, what I, Animal Crossing, another one changes seasons yeah every the seasons. time you go off, it's a different season you know and it's like so good just really well done across the board like the excite bike track another one where they took a track that like that's not one of the best tracks that is like, my favorite track i get yeah. on that track and i i you know it's like I'm it's such going. a simple design but yeah. it works so well and it changes every time you race it. yeah that's the other cool thing like like excite bike where you could design the tracks and change yeah. them it's what they do so good and again the music they take the music that is very plain and, and chippy 8-bit you know and they just put that twist on it and it's so good man it, it really yeah, is definitely um rayman legends is on my list and you know how I feel about Ubisoft. You know yep. how how much I can't stand them and I hate them. Yeah, gotta tell them. If I gotta tell you, if you own the Wii U, this is the game. If I had to tell you one game you have to own on the Wii U, this is it. This is the game that defines the gamepad. This is the game that was built from the ground up for the Wii U. And shame they ported it though, isn't it? It's a shame that well because because they went back on their promise. We were talking about this last week a little bit, and the the downfall of Zombie U and the downfall of Assassin's Creed Three is what made them pull it, because the yeah. units weren't sold there, and they were like, "We need to do something." But not only did they, and this is where my disdain for Ubisoft comes in, is not only did they make it not an exclusive, they didn't even put it on the Wii U first, yeah, on the consoles first, and yeah. then. It cr- this is the game that if you own a Wii U, you need this game. Like straight up, there's touchpad stuff. There's you know where you're you're playing and you're like moving characters along with the touchpad, and then like you have to like turn the level. So you hold the gamepad and you're like turning it, but you're looking at the gamepad. You're not looking at the, sc- the, the screen. Just so well done, and it's just amazing. I, I it looks gorgeous. You know, I mean, it looks like it, it's hands down one of the best looking games on the Wii U. It's just a shame that they they yanked the exclusivity of it, and I think it would have helped Nintendo a little bit. I, I I do feel like if you don't own this game, you're just fool's errand, man. You're making a mistake. I put uh, Captain Toad on my list. Really? Yep. Because wow. I just think it's a really cool concept. And just a really fun game. Like, yeah. see, I, I'm a fan of 3D World, but mm-hmm. I feel like that game just is lacking something for me. It doesn't feel special. But I think Captain Toad, as a spin off of that, it's so unique 
and it feels so different, like for a, a Mario themed game. Yeah, I know it's not got Mario like jumping and everything, but but you know, playing as Toad, and it's just a, sort of a cool little experimental game that they they f- sort of fleshed out into a full game. And but I like the coolest thing. Did you beat this game? I've not beat it. No, oh, I've got God. quite. I've got quite far in it. You, are I don't beat ridiculous. games. You know, I don't. No, beat I know games. you don't. But this game ties into 3D World, mm. and the ending ties into the beginning of 3D World. Oh, so that's it's, interesting. It's just neat, it, it, you know, because it's yeah. the, the the theory of the story is is he goes out and collects all the power ups for the Mario games, mm-hmm. and he's that's his job. His job is to collect the power ups and take them to Mario. So when you find when you when you're playing the Mario games and you go into these um, little mushroom oh, yeah, little toad houses, yeah, little toad houses stuff that's supplied by Captain Toad. That's and, that's a cool little like it's, touch. Yeah. It's, like, it's, yeah. it's it, it was nice. It was a nice way to tie that all in together. Yeah, so, but yeah. it's just a very sort of mechanical game, and I love games that just concentrate mainly on the mechanics yeah. of like how you play rather than just the story and everything. So, um, for me. Wind Waker HD, and the reason why I say that is when I played Wind Waker originally, I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot, but the sailing aspect drove me up the wall, and with this one, they fixed that. Yeah, they, they really did fix yeah, it. When, when they put in the swift sail, it made life so much better, and it made it like, because it, it, it the worst part about the original was you had to keep stopping figure out where you you need to know where you wanted to go before you started sailing mm-hmm. then change the direction of the wind and then head out that way and then god forbid you messed up yeah and you had to read because then you'd have to stop so, yeah pain in the butt yeah put the music yeah. on again change direction go this just basically was like you threw the swift sail up and you wherever you went it was like the wind was at your back and it yeah. improved the game drastically not to mention that the game just looked gorgeous. Like they really, oh, yeah, it looks job. amazing. It was like playing a Pixar movie. You know, they yeah. they really did a great job with that game. So yeah, that's why I put that on there. So uh, I've got a controversial one here. Well, here we go. Um, Nintendo Land. Really? That's reason, your must own. Well, the reason I put that on there is because that's one of the only ga- games on Wii U that really sells the gamepad to me. Because... Did you play, when Rayman, I, did when, you play Rayman Legends? No, I didn't. Thank you. Thank you. But, That's why I didn't put Nintendo Land on there. Because but I, Rayman, I feel Rayman. like Nintendo Land was like a good starting point for the gamepad that they never ran with. I'm like, surprised you didn't say Mario Maker. Mario Maker's on there. Where? But like, on my list. How? You're, on, you're seeing your last game now. No, I'm not. How are you not? You should be in your fifth game. Look, Lego City, yeah. Mario Kart 8, Captain yeah. Toad, yeah. Nintendo Land, Mario Maker. How the hell did you... Where did you miss one at? Oh, because I have... Oh, because you've read Mario Maker. Oh, whatever. Anyway. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, anyway. I just feel like Nintendo Land... Ha- like, specifically, the Chase Me... And the Animal Crossing and the Luigi's Mansion thing, like those mini games, there's a lot of filler in Nintendo Land, and a lot of crap. Oh, a lot of crap. But those little golden nuggets, like Chase Me, are just so fun to play with your friends on the couch. Like, mm-hmm. you know, using the camera to see your cheeky little face in the corner of the screen, like grinning mm-hmm. from ear to ear because people are chasing up. It's such a simple little concept that I really love. Stop. And I just wish that Nintendo took those ideas further. No, no. I just think it's underappreciated. It's controversial because it's garbage. It's like, underappreciated. It's, okay, it's not garbage. That's a bit harsh. Sonic is garbage. That's this isn't necessarily garbage, but the it's Pikmin not very good. Thing is cool. Like it's not that good. It's not that good. It's not worth. I don't know. I, I yeah. There's some stuff that's really cool on it. I give you that. Um, I like See, unlocking, I, could, I, I, I liked unlocking the little statues and stuff in the, Yeah. I mean I could have put Pikmin 3 on there very easily, but it's just another Pikmin game. You no, know? that's a great Pikmin game. That's it a, is a yeah, they are great games, yeah. but what I'm saying is that Nintendo Land has some golden nuggets in it that people just forget about. They don't care about it because it's got some filler in it. You know? Yeah, I would have yeah, no. 
for me, I put Splatoon. Um, last year was my game of the year. It, it, this game was phenomenal. And to, to basically, I felt like this game utilized the gamepad to perfection. Um, it did everything you needed to do with the gamepad. Um, but that aside, like I didn't, I'm not trying to sell the system with, with that game. It, it, I just feel like that game was just so much fun. I'm not a shooter person by any stretch of the imagination. It's not one of my big key, but this game is just so much fun. And we, you know, in the group, maybe that's part of the reason why I enjoyed it so much too, was in the, in the geek guru, Nintendo guru group that we have on Facebook, we'd have nights where we just, and when this game came out, it was like almost every single night, a group of us would be on and playing it. Um, I just loved it. I thought it was so good. And it, it, and being an original IP was even better that I felt like we were, especially with Nintendo where we're just given sequel after sequel, after sequel, after sequel with minor touches to it to get a game like this. That's just, a brand new IP that came out of nowhere and all these mechanics like to swim in the paint, like you drop the paint and you just swim through it and stuff. So good. Just yeah. so well done. And, um, and look gorgeous. The soundtrack again, a great soundtrack. Loved it. Yep. So for me, that that's a definite have to be, have to own. Um, it's probably better than Nintendo Land. It's much better than <laughs> Nintendo Land. I can't even believe that you would even. No, I know uh, that. I know that get, there's tons of other Wii U games that are better than Nintendo Land. I just felt like giving it a mention because no one ever talks about Nintendo Land. There's a reason why they don't talk about it. <laughs> there's a reason, my friend. <laughs> Mario Maker. Let's talk about that a little. Yeah, bit. Mario Maker. Like that's another shining example of gamepad usage that absolutely is absolutely phenomenal. That, yeah. I, when we were talking to uh, this week, this week on, if we ran Nintendo, we had Jules watch them um, yeah. from renegade kid on there, me and me and Sean. And we were talking and I said, I did, I did bring it up and I said, if Splatoon and Mario maker were at the beginning of the Wii U life, I don't think we're talking about NX and I don't think that it's as bad as things are for Nintendo. Mm -hmm. I think because in the beginning, the first couple of years, for whatever reason, it, it's weird because when the internet gets something stuck in their head, that's all they want. That's their argument. And that's all they want to talk about. But their argument in the beginning was, was like, well, what's the reason of having the game pad? I don't want to use the game pad. I should just be able to use a pro controller. It's a waste of money to have this in there. We could eliminate the game pad, save a hundred bucks and be able to go. And I feel like if these two games are at the beginning of the life of the Wii U, nobody says that. Because yeah. then everybody goes like, well, how are you going to build levels with Mario Maker? Yeah, exactly. How are you going to, you know, yeah. and Mario Maker to me was, I, and that's the other thing. When we first got the Wii U, we got new Super Mario Brothers U, which I don't think was a great Mario, Mario game. Um, it was okay, you know, but we were in that rut where we were just getting Mario, side, side-scrolling 2D Mario games, one after the other after the other. And I feel like we just got one on the Wii. Yep. Um, we just got one on the 3DS, and they're all and the got, same. Like, yeah, and they're all the same. It's just yeah. you know this this one on it was harder, but I felt like man, if they would have done this in the beginning, whew, they would have yeah. killed it. It would have killed because it was so good. I mean, I went back and I was playing a couple weeks ago. I went back and I was trying to unlock all the the mystery outfits and stuff. Some of them levels are brutal, man. I went in and I was just like, holy crap! Because then I jumped into like creator stuff and i'm like yeah oh my god man it is so there's a website um and i don't know it's a shame i don't know the name of it but there's a website where they actually broke it down um and you can go and submit your codes to cool. them and it's much better it's a much better setup than what we have with nintendo hmm. um but uh, in the beginning you know like you made a lot of them troll levels and <laughs> Uh, and I had to teach you how to build levels. I remember. Oh, that. did you? you had yes, to because me. because you were just you just didn't comprehend how to make these levels enjoyable. No, I made levels that were fantastic. <laughs> if you knew how to play Mario, but Bobby doesn't know how to play. No, Mario. no, no, no. You made levels that run. were like yeah. he doesn't hold the run button. <laughs> Stop. Stop. The thing is, like Mario Maker, it makes dreams come true. Like when I was a yeah. kid. I used to draw Mario levels on paper mm. and I dreamt of becoming a designer for Nintendo one day. Yeah. And this game lets you do that. 
Sorry, Kareem's just, just come through the door and it's fine. Riley's going mental. That's <laughs> fine. Riley but, is mental. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's one of those games that like we all, you know, you, like you said, when you're a kid, you dream of working for Nintendo one day. You dream of making Mario levels. Um, and to actually be able to do it was just so much fun. And it was such a blast to do. So I, I'm I'm with you there wholeheartedly. Um I think I think we're good. I don't think we need to dip into the other one. We could probably hold that for next week. Yeah. Okay. So that is all. Thank you guys for listening to us. iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher. I will try to get this on Google Play very soon. Morse code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna turn the podcast into Morse code. We should. There might be an alien nation out there someplace that just yeah. they know what Morse code is, and they, we should try that. We should see what we can do. Yeah, we'll let the robots listen to us. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, watching us on YouTube, we have the YouTube channel that we we post to every week. Uh, follow me, Instagram, Twitter at Nintendo Gurus. Follow Toby, Instagram at Amiibo underscore Workshop. Twitter at Toby's underscore Take. That is all. Peace out, Cub Scout. See me later. Get on what it is, what it does, what it is, what it isn't. Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit me. Get up, fresh shot, come strut walking. A little bit of humble, a little bit of.